Sunday. What's the hottest show on Saturday morning? You have control. Cartoons. Let's see cartoons. One yes. answer is more popular. What could it be, Dana? The inside stuff. Show me inside stuff. Woo! Number one. Now, now what's that? No, that's the inside stuff. Now on NBA Inside Stuff. We'll pay a visit to everyone's favorite granny, Larry Johnson. Oh, well, well, I was getting popular lately. What, what, what? Kevin Duckworth's leaving his old friend to take a walk on the wild side. Duckworth! And the feud is raging between the Laker girls and the Nick City dancers. We're ready for the feud! Give me room. I'm going high, so let it get up in the air. <laughs> the killer crossover. Oh, oh what a move by Trump. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Ahmad Rashad. And I'm Willow Bay. Today, I'll spend some time with the Charlotte Hornets sensational rookie, Larry Johnson. We got together for one of my very favorite activities pumping iron in the weight room. Plus, you'll see the Knicks and the Lakers dance teams not dancing, but feuding as they match wits on Family Feud. And something you've all been waiting for, the touching story of Portland's Kevin Duckworth and his pet lizard, Homie. We tip off with the NBA's change of seasons. Tomorrow, the regular season ends and playoff fever begins. The stakes get higher, and so does the intensity of the players, the coaches, and the fans in the NBA version of the Sweet 16. And out of the 16 playoff teams, one is the team to beat. Hi right, boys, this is it. This is it. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. That's what we work for all season long, guys. Let's take it home. Ready? Michael and his supporting cast are ready for an encore as the Bulls shoot for their second straight title. <laughs> Out to prove last year was no fluke, Chicago finished with the league's best record. That gives them home court advantage throughout the playoffs. Meanwhile, the Boston Celtics are peaking at playoff time, having seized control of the Atlantic Division from the New York Knicks. It's very important, you know, it especially gives us that home court advantage. And, you know, we definitely didn't want to play Detroit in the playoffs because we know how tough they are. And now things are looking up for us. We don't win the division. We go in and have to play Detroit and Chicago. Well, we're just in a waiting game right now. You know, we're just hoping. <laughs> it has been a long wait for the New Jersey Nets, but a win tonight puts them in the playoffs for the first time in six years. We still have one chance to start a game against Orlando, and uh, we control our destiny. The Portland Trailblazers are favored in the West, and they'll settle for nothing less than the championship. The L.A. Clippers are in the playoffs for the first time since the franchise was in Buffalo, and they're out to do some damage. We're not content, though. That, that needs to be known. We're not content with making it to the playoffs. We want more. We can get more. The Clippers haven't made the playoffs in 16 years, and Coach Larry Brown says, that's longer than he stays at most of his jobs. But two perennial playoff teams who won't be there this year are the Philadelphia 76ers and the Milwaukee Bucks. The Charlotte Hornets aren't going to the playoffs, but they are going in the right direction, led by standout rookie Larry Johnson. He's had some awesome performances this year, gaining a reputation not just with his game, but with his nickname. In a league that has the Chief, the Admiral, and Sir Charles, Larry has become grandmama, but he hopes to add a much more impressive title, Rookie of the Year. When you're a rookie, you have to prove yourself every night. You have to work hard, hustle, rebound, yell, play defense, work, 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 work. Don't forget to smile. I also get to dunk. The dunk. Oh. I love the dog. You know, 
Being a rookie is not so bad after all. Larry, you're new to the league, but you're definitely not playing that way. Do you feel like a rookie? No, not at all. Um, I was a rookie in the seventh grade when I first started playing this game. Uh, I'm not here to change the standards. Okay, I'm a rookie, but I don't feel like a rookie at all. And he sure isn't playing like a rookie either. Johnson, whoa, that was big. Not only is Johnson having a great season, he's having a great time doing it. Smile, he said, yeah. Most guys play with their game face. So you always play with a smile. Are you That's having my a great time? Face. That's my game That's face. Uh, I have to have a good time. Uh, I just try to be myself. Mm -hmm. In 82 games, you have to do something to make it fun. You seem good at that, though. Making it fun? Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I expect to be in this league a long time. I want to make it fun. Hit me! What comes through loud and clear is that besides having fun, Larry's now the leader of the Young Hornets. To Johnson. At the buzzer on the count. You play with an enormous amount of confidence. Where does that confidence come from? You know, we was always taught never back down. You know, go out, play as hard as you possibly can play, and you're just as good as anybody out there. So it's confidence and toughness. Well, you gotta have a toughness. I mean, I just, ain't nobody tougher than me. Oh, yeah. Maybe something better, not tougher. <laughs> well, it's one thing to talk tough, but I wanted to see if Larry could back it up in the weight room. This is where it's done. This is the gym. Fuck, man. No pain, no gain. Malone. I don't work on the guns right here. Comments. You know, I, I'm looking at myself in the mirror, of course. You gotta have. You gotta have that. Whoever. 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 Come up slowly. Oh, look at that. Get that now. Get that. I can get it. You run this, I might be able to give me a bait now. Larry was making the workout look so easy, I figured even I could do it. And after getting warmed up, I was ready for bigger things. No, no, no. We're gonna work on you. I'm gonna get you in two weeks. Body by <laughs> Boom. Let's go. I guess you've got to be a tough man to wear a dress and bloomers. Larry took on the role of Grandmama for a TV commercial. And now Grandmama mania is sweeping the nation, with everyone getting into the act. There's no telling where this might lead for Johnson. Do you have uh, any acting plans in your future? Oh, after, after basketball. Uh, Frank Sinatra. For now, Larry will stick to being chairman of these boards. He's already taken his place among the NBA elite, and this is only the beginning. I just didn't want to come in this league and be another player, be another number one pick, be another good college player, and come in this league and make some money in the league. So I just want to be, if anybody talk about a younger generation, or everybody talk about when the league is laying on the shoulders of this younger generation, this guy, this guy, I want to be one of those guys. Larry's main competition for Rookie of the Year has been Dikembe Mutombo and Billy Owens. Now, Larry says he doesn't worry about it because it just adds extra pressure. He wants to play to win. But he's obviously pretty confident about his chances because he's been known to call up former teammate Greg Anthony in the middle of the night and say, hi, this is Rookie of the Year. In the middle of the night. <laughs> yes, that 3 sounds like confidence <laughs> to me. But you know what? He should be confident. When I saw him at UNLV, I knew that this guy was a man-child and he was destined to be a star in the NBA. He does everything right. He's absolutely terrific. Runs, jumps, smiles. Well. And he's a great trainer. <laughs> oh, yeah, we noticed. <laughs> As the regular season winds up, the NBA playoff race is going down to the wire. So let's get you caught up on all of last night's action. The Rockets were looking to clinch a playoff spot in Dallas, but the Mavs showed little hospitality. Houston had two chances to win it at the buzzer, but both shots were off target. Akeem and his teammates will be watching the Lakers today. An L.A. loss in Portland or a Rocket victory Sunday in Phoenix earns Houston the number eight spot in the West. In Oakland, a possible second-round playoff matchup. The Warriors hosting the Clippers, and this one was Golden State wire to wire. Beautiful feed to ask you. In Indianapolis, the Cavs jumped out to a 26-point lead. The Pacers fought back, but Steve Kerr capped a 24-point performance with a clutch three-pointer. The Hawks are battling to stay alive, but had their hands full as Michael and company paid a visit to the Omni. Hands Livingston for the yes. slam. Michael finished with 21 points. Pippen added 20, including this bomb. The Nets can clinch with a win today against Orlando, and Miami wins the eighth spot if they finish tied with Atlanta. I want the inside stuff. Still to come. <laughs> the Knicks City dancers are pumped up as they try to settle the score with the Laker girls. Let's play the music!
and Clyde the Glide special edition of Jam Session. But first, Kevin Duckworth's exotic pet is another mouth to feed. Right now, the hardest part is feeding them rats because I don't like touching them. Now that's the inside stuff. NBA Inside Stuff is brought to you by Jeep and Eagle, official vehicles of the NBA. And by McDonald's. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Well, here it is, gentlemen. Top of the world. Now, I put my camera here. Your vehicle would face out over the cliffs. What do you think? Look, if you plan to claim your vehicle's as good as a Jeep, you really need this shot in your commercial. How are we going to get our vehicle up here? Helicopter. We'll lift it. Well, let's, let's do it. Let's huh? do it. Right. Great. Let's go down and make some calls. Yeah. Same thing. Cool. It's going to be a great commercial. Around the world or down the street, Ooh. there's a place where people like to eat. Oh, yeah. McDonald's knows that you need a break. Especially in times like these. Oh, See what you want. Trade you. Anything for my baby, baby Ruth. If you're nuts about nougat, crazy for caramel, and absolutely wild about peanuts, you'd do anything for a baby Ruth. Anything for my baby. Hey, that's my car. Baby Ruth. Besides being a great basketball team, the Portland Trail Blazers are just a bunch of wild and crazy guys. Now, Cliff Robinson has a headband for every occasion. Buck Williams likes to get behind the wheel of riverboats. And Ala Abdelnabi has been known to enter a game without his game jersey. So no one, of course, was surprised to hear about Kevin Duckworth's new pet. He's the first one on his block to own an East African lizard. We caught up with Kevin and his faithful companion, Homie. <laughs> It seems life is never dull for Kevin Duckworth, even off the court. At home, Kevin works on model cars. He's got a fishing boat, fishing poles, he even has some pet fish, not to mention his pet pooch. Man, love his, love his animals, boy. He feed his animals, he treat his animals, but he treat his teammates. <laughs> now Kevin's found a new friend, adopting a pet lizard. What's his name? This is homie right here. So how do people, homie? Homie for his lizard. <laughs> He's an East African savannah monitor. I saw it three years ago, one of these guys in Utah. Uh, I fell in love with it, but I wasn't sure it was a thing for me. Duck is kind of a caring, kind of a sensitive guy. He has a real love for animals. Spending quality time together, Kevin and Homie have formed a special relationship. He really doesn't understand the lizard, and no one understands him, so I guess they get along well. Now that Kevin has both a dog and a lizard, what could possibly be next? I do have, um, on order, two chinchillas, <laughs> which I hope Homie never get a hold of. Kevin first became acquainted with the reptile world when he bought an iguana, but he got rid of it when it got too wild. He's also talked about becoming a worm breeder someday, saying he wants a stress-free job after he quits basketball. This must be Kevin's lucky day, because he also makes rewind, this time without the lizard. But we did manage to find a slam-dunking gorilla, and yet another amazing dunk by Stacy Ogman, who seems to outdo himself every single night. Plus, the most incredible missed dunk of the year, and something many people enjoy seeing, an embarrassing moment for Bill Lame Beer. All that and another visit with Grandmama in this edition of Rewind. You can't start Rewind until you get the official countdown. Saturday in Chicago, it is Samurai Night Fever, and any way you cut it, it looks like the Bulls are headed for another banner year. Gary Grinch chasing after a loose ball and talk about getting in your face. Hey, back off. Sunday. Yes, the Blazers are tough enough for stuff, especially Kevin Duckworth. He wins one for the Lizard as Portland terminates the Spurs, and Terry Porter is one of Duckworth's biggest fans. Mark Jackson was a real pain in the backside to Bill Lame Beer. 
It was Grandmama Night in Charlotte and make way for a new generation of grannies. Monday, Chris Gatling blows the jam but escapes embarrassment when he gets the friendly bounce. Amazing! But on this one, Stacey Ogman left no room for doubt. And afterward, he watched his old UNLV coach, Jerry Tarkanian, being named Spurs head coach. This was a great opportunity. Uh, I've always thought that I would get into the NBA uh, near the end of my career. Yeah, we'll turn the whole program around. Tuesday, by the look of Phil Jackson, somebody was eating garlic or something on the Bulls bench. Buzzer beat of the week, it's Kevin taking a gamble. Booster the Rocket had a little problem on the launching pad. Boy, was that ugly. And speaking of ugly, the Phoenix Gorilla goes bananas with the monster slam and the headbutt. That was the beast. This is the beauty, and she also throws it down. Wednesday, check out this one-hand half-court alley-oop John Stockton to David Benoit. Thursday. The Clippers didn't need a kick in the pants to get pumped up for this one as Kenny Norman's hustle helped L.A. take care of the Timberwolves and wrap up a playoff spot. And the Los Angeles Clippers are on their way to the playoffs for the first time since the 1975. And let's wrap this up before Billy nods off. Finally, basketball is not a very complicated game, according to Cleveland's Brad Doherty. A reporter asked him about the Cavs' recent improvement in their field goal average. Doherty said... Putting the ball in the basket is what usually helps the shooting percentages. Thanks for clearing that up, Brad. Next week, we'll ask him how many seconds there are on the 24-second clock. Don't go away. There is a lot more stuff to come. Rewind is brought to you by Reebok, who reminds you that life is short. Play hard. Yo, Sinbad here with the black top shoe. I got my boys here from the International Committee. I got Schwinn and Schwinn. I'm trying to get the outside game acquired the summer game here in Barcelona, right? Tell me you don't love this game. Look at this game. Come on, give my man a monster slam. Oh, hey, you you play 60 months. You got to play black top shoe. I mean, you can't beat this. This is made for the outdoor game. How do you pick the team, though? How do you pick your teams? You call games. I got game. No, no. I got game. I got game. Yo, I got game. No, you ain't gonna never get a game. So, we definitely going to Barcelona this summer? Is that too much to ask for? Am I asking too much here? Upper Deck takes you there. names in the game in the game's greatest seniors tournament the pga seniors championship today on nbc it's gonna get exciting now it's gonna get exciting now oh, oh, yes. ah! oh my goodness what a point in today's classic 11-point lead for the Spurs. Thompson goes to work on Gervin. Goes over Gervin again. George Gervin and David Thompson, rivals of the 70s. Gervin was the Iceman with a cool hand. Thompson was Luke Skywalker, soaring to the hoop. Anytime I faced it, David, uh, you know, it was quite a challenge. Uh, we always used to guard each other. Um, always had a lot of respect for his game. And, I used to call him back then, David the Giant Killer, because he can shoot the ball from the outside. So we were trying to keep him from getting the ball, but his jumping ability really kind of made that impossible. For the Iceman. Ice being 6'8", and can shoot the ball outside and got the great moves to the hoop. You know, you couldn't play on him real tight uh, because he could go by you. And he had all these moves where he'd go up and under, spin it off the glass, and hang a roll from 15 feet, and nothing but net. Back in 1978, last day of the season, Thompson scored 73 points and thought he'd won the scoring title. But George Iceman Gervin came right back, scored 63, 
took it away, and it was the closest scoring race in NBA history. And this year, Michael Jordan has locked up his sixth straight scoring crown and hopes to add a second straight championship ring. Winning a championship is supposed to be the ultimate feeling in sports, but the Bulls' title was more of an empty feeling for Dennis Hobson. Now with Sacramento, Dennis spent last year as the little-used 12th man in Chicago. During the playoffs, I knew that if I played, it would only be for like a split second. I was just basically like a, a cheerleader, I guess. It was a great organization, great program, but uh, it just wasn't right for me. At times, I used to go home at night and just, uh, I don't know, just, just lay in the bed and just think, think, think. Going into a game, like you said, you never knew if you were going to play or if you was going to play. What time is it? Game time! <laughs> Some kind of way you had to uh, psych yourself up and, and treat it just like it is, a job. And if you're calling on, you just have to go out, like I said, for that minute or half a minute you're on the floor and, and try to make something happen in the time you're out there. Getting it to Hobson. That'll count. Oh, my. A three-pointer by Hobson. It was very tough. At times, you feel like when you're not playing, I mean, at least somebody could come over to me and, and say hello. I got a ring. I'm happy because a lot of guys go to this league without ever getting a ring, but uh, I got a ring. But I don't feel that I earned the ring. I get my chance, and uh, I'm happy for these guys. I'm happy for myself, and uh, I'm just ready to come back and be ready next year. I just would have liked to have more to do with winning the ring. And um, I would have liked to play in the game, but I never I didn't, didn't get a chance to play. This year, Dennis was traded to Sacramento. And after being a forgotten man in Chicago, he was a key man off the bench for the Kings, averaging 10 points a game as a backup guard. Though his career is looking up, his season's actually over. The Kings played their final game last night. Well, later today, the Trail Blazers wind up their regular season against the Lakers here on NBC. Portland hopes that their season lasts way into June, which would mean that they would be in the NBA Finals. Well, today we salute their captain and one of my favorite players. This is where I always say one of my favorite something. Clyde Drexler with a collection of his greatest dunks. Clyde's one of the many players featured in the new home video, NBA Superstars 2. So let us now glide into jam session. Jam. Clyde. Oh, jam. 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 Baseline drive, and he goes three points. Yeah. Another steal. This time it's Drexler. And look at it. Drexler, strong drive, score! Here's Drexler. Two to the Jam Session is brought to you by Gatorade. It's all you're thirsting for. Sometimes I dream that he is me. You got to see that's how I dream to be. A dream I move. A dream I grew. Yo, 
sit my head back with the outside game. I got Dan and Dave, the world's two greatest athletes, taking them outside. I want you to meet some of my homies here, man. Hey, Yo, hey, Mr. Big, hey, T Bone, hey, Big Way! Hey, hey, Watch this. We got the black top shoe. We don't need anything else, man. Yo, man, can I get the ball? I just got you. I got the greatest athletes in the world. I got the greatest athletes in the world. We rock black top. Feel for the outside. I'm ready to play. Y'all ready to play? Let's play. Dad, I really don't feel like cooking today. Let's go to McDonald's. Tell me what you want. It's yours. This place makes me happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. <laughs> Tell me what you need is yours. Two more minutes. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. All right, that's enough. Let's go. Saturday at 3, the Trailblazers battle the Lakers. And Sunday at 3, it's Michael versus Isaiah, the Bulls versus the Pistons. All this weekend on NBC. New York versus L.A. is always a special rivalry in basketball or in dancing. The Laker girls are the dynasty of NBA dance teams, while the Knicks City dancers are the new kids on the block. Well, the rivalry has been heating up all year long, and there was only, well, there was a couple of ways to sell it. One, they could go out in the alley, or two, they could have a showdown on Family Feud. Now, as our resident dance team correspondent, I checked out the action as East meets West. As they warmed up for the feud, the two sides got acquainted and tried to keep things on a friendly basis. Whoever wins, wins. Like I said, it's, it's going to our charity, so it's not, for, at least for me personally, it's, I don't, it's not a competition. Wrong, because the intensity grew higher as Showtime got closer. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're ready. We're ready to kick some Laker girls. We feel confident. Feel good about being here. Let's go. Let's play the feud. Something a single man spend money on, single women don't. I don't know any single men. <laughs> oh, oh, girls, 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 this is not mud wrestling. Settle down now. It's the name of sport. That requires good aim. Bow and arrows. Uh, you know, come on. You know, bow and arrows. Uh... It took them a while to get on target, but soon the Nick dancers were rolling. You can give me this answer. You're playing for 10 grand. You are the grand champion. Pancakes. In the pressure-packed final round, the money was on the line. $10,000 for one great charity. What the survey say? You know! The Nick City dancers were victorious, and they donated their $10,000 in winnings to the Boys Brotherhood Republic, a home on the Lower East Side of New York for troubled kids. That's great. That was a really heated rivalry. Do you think there'll be a rematch? Um, maybe next year. And you'll be there. No, no, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm washing my car that day. Well, that's our show for today. And next week on Inside Stuff, Marv Albert is hard at work compiling the wild and the wacky. He'll join us with the Albert Achievement Awards, plus we'll spend a day in the life of the Boston Celtics' Kevin McHale. Around the house, Kevin is downright dangerous. Oops. How you doing over there? There is more NBA action coming your way later today, right here on NBC. From Portland, it's the Blazers and the Lakers at 3 o'clock Eastern time. And we'll see you back here next Saturday on NBA Inside Stuff. So long, everybody. Hotel accommodations furnished to NBA Inside Stuff by ITT Sheraton, the official hotel for the NBA and proud sponsor of USA Basketball. Monday will.